be called to order. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First item on the agenda will be approval of the minutes from the December the 11th meeting. Mayor, make a motion to approve the minutes from the December 11th meeting. It has been moved and second to approve the minutes. Would the clerk please by roll? Adams? Yes. Kmart? Yes. Malott? Yes. Driver? Yes. Spike? Stay. Next item on the agenda will be approval of the statement of the bill paid in the amount of $382,311.13. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we pay the statement of bills in the amount of $382,311.13. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve the payment of the bills. Statement of the bills paid. Would the clerk please call roll? Adam? Yes. Kahar? Yes. Malott? Yes. Schreier? Yes. Dyke? Yes. Next item will be comments or requests from the public. Then move on to item Would you please state your name and address? Fred Brandt, 1449 South Pine Street. Fred Brandt. Fred Brandt. Fred. Just had a question on, I got a letter about the sewer service and water service. Yes. If I'm on septic, am I, not going to, am I still not going to have to pay sewer? That's correct. That's correct. Huh? That's correct. You won't have any sewer. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. We're trying to clarify. So okay. we sent the letter out to everybody. Yeah, I remember the letter. And, and, and so that came up. So we are yeah. trying to get that word out that so yeah. people that do not that are on septic will not have any <coughs> change as they are right now. They can get their water bill from EPU and then mm -hmm. get their trash bill from the city. If they are on sewer. They will no longer see sewer. On their bill yeah, after the next building cycle. So the BPU's last cycle for mm -hmm. sewer uh, actually is tomorrow. If the bills go out the 15th, and so that should be the last bill they get okay. if they're on sewer that has the sewer charges. Thank you. I have a question on that. Uh, would you please come yes. forward and state your name and address? Right. And Dan Norris, 1521 South 105th. Um, okay, I understand on septic there's no sewer, but isn't there no stormwater assessment against anyone out here? We do not have stormwater. We don't have stormwater. Yeah. What about drainage upkeep and ditch upkeep and is that just general? Yeah, any any drain, if we do any improvements this, right this now. Question. Should, yeah, right now we do not have a storm. There's no storm assessment. Okay. That was my question. Never say never, but I mean, that's always on the plate. So. Thank you. Are there any others? Okay, if not, we'll move on to item number four. Consider resolution 2018-01, authorizing the city to adopt the one at County Emergency Operations Plan. Mayor, council members, before you invite is the resolution 2018-01, authorizing the adoption of the one at County Emergency Operations Plan. Over the last 18 months, city staff has participated in the county plan development of Wyandotte County Emergency Management. This is an ever-evolving process that occurs about every five years. Strongly recommended to the Department of Homeland Security through the Federal Emergency Management Agency. What the county emergency operations plan does is provide an overall template for how to respond to, mitigate, prepare for, and function during emergencies, whether they're man-made or natural, such as a tornado, for a terrorist event. Part of the plan adoption is back in front of you because it has been five years since the last plan was approved in 2012. If we do not adopt the uh, ELP plan, we are on our FEMA uh, ability to claim dash disaster assistance. Um, if this plan is not adopted in our area, if we've not adopted our home, it is easier for us to piggyback off of Wyandotte County's emergency management plan it incorporates a focal point for the county and the unified government coordinating the disaster response. 
So, in other words, the plan is vital for if we were to have a large scale tornado, that we sit there and seed our mutual aid resources for either fire, EMS, police, or public works. We could sit there and start to immediately pull from the county, and if they are not available, we could pull from the adjacent counties through the emergency operations center to deactivate during the plan. <coughs> Excuse me. Also, part of the plan has the mayor and city manager as representative for the EOC if an event occurs and follows along with the UG. There is no cost for us to sign on to the emergency operations plan. However, there is a consideration of disaster assistance reimbursement tied into the plan. The existing plan in 2012 allowed for bad disaster assistance plans in 2017 will be meeting on tomorrow that we have some objective potential disaster revenue costs from thunderstorm events during this past summer. So we strongly recommend by staff that we recommend or that we adopt this resolution and continue to participate in the EOC EOP planning process for the next phase five years out. So any questions? Do we have a voice at that table when there's um, you know, changes to this plan? Yes, sir. Or, yes, sir. Meetings? Myself, a police representative, Ms. Snyder, um, have all set through all the planning uh, meetings throughout each one of the 15 functional annexes that occurred. So who's uh, over Edwardsville in case of one of these disasters if you're, is it a... It's the city manager is the primary responsibility for responding to and setting in the EOC um, as representative for the city of Edwardsville. Yeah. So it's, because the, it is assumed that as small as communities we are, myself with the police chief or the local uh, department that is being pertained to the incident will be working in the field aspect. So the plan, and we should probably look up it. So it has these 15 different annexes. So, so depending on what type of emergency it is. So, you know, if it's a train derailment, then the lead's going to go to to fire. If it was, uh, you know, some other type of thing, it may go to police. So it, it, we don't have, quote, a separate <coughs> management staff person that that's all they do. So it's really dependent upon the event uh, and whether the EOC is even open. I mean, it, it could be a localized event that just impacts us, but yet it may still have the ability to have federal reimbursement. So we have, I mean, it is a challenge, but we have used it on a couple of occasions where we have gotten some partial reimbursement of our costs. Technically, I think under the law, the mayor is the official of every city, the way the federal government has set up. The mayor is the official emergency management officer, but he or she can then delegate that to the department of personnel. So we're not surrendering sovereignty, sovereignty no, over any of the no, issues? Actually, actually as Mr. Webber alluded, there is a KSA. The uh, mayor or his designee is the emergency government official. Um, during the declared uh, declaration of an emergency, if uh, per se we had a tornado that affected us strongly in the trailer park, my point of contact would be to contact city manager who would contact the mayor saying we have an emergency declared that they have exceeded our resources. And one or two of us would be making the phone call to the emergency manager on duty, desk officer down at Wyandotte County declaring our emergency that would then sit there and start the process to put it in front of the governor's desk at the state agency. There is some training that is required for staff to get to follow up on some NIMS training for those that are pertinent to the EOC operations and field operations, um, particularly it would be the NIMS 300 and 400, I believe for Mr. Webb and the mayor who are sitting in the EOC besides itself, the police chief and Ms. Snyder. Um, the majority of staff has already had that training. We just need to go through over this next year and ensure that some of the new staff we have on have the lower levels of training that there is. Make a motion to adopt Resolution 2018-01. Second. It has been moved and seconded to adopt Resolution 2018-01. Would the clerk please call the roll? Adams? Yes. K.R.? Yes. Mowat? Yes. Schreiber? Yes. Stuck. Yes. The next item on the agenda will be consider Resolution 2018-02, authorizing the consider manager into the lease purchase agreement for financing public safety equipment and technology. Let me give an overview here, and then, uh, as necessary, we can have our two chiefs address the technology. But uh, during the budget time, uh, we, on the fire side, knew that we needed to replace our 
uh, monitors that are used for the cardiac monitors. Basically, they were getting dated, and some of the technology for telemetry isn't available to those. So within the budget, we, uh, in the sales tax, special sales tax fund, identified that as one of our expenses. Uh, as we, and so part of the money, the vast majority of the money, is for that. The second piece has come into the area of public safety on the police side for storage primarily of our video uh, records that we're required to maintain. Uh, as noted in the memo, right now uh, we aren't really able to meet those industry standards. That is, we like to be able to maintain all video for 90 days. There are certain videos uh, that we cannot do that. Uh, and so we looked at the options of whether we use an on-site device or cloud-based devices, uh, and the, the preferred method was on-site because its life cycle cost was, was less than using cloud uh, on this particular uh, situation. Again, technically, I think both the chiefs can address, you know, why we buy this old monitor in this particular one. Uh, we also have the EMS director here and on the police side. Why we would use this particular device over some other device. The financing mechanism for those, uh, instead of doing these as separate items, we went to the banks and said, can you just package this all together? We've done that with vehicles in the past where we buy two police cars, a public works truck, and a piece of equipment. Could you get a little bit better interest rate, not significant better interest rate? You know, you know four or five. You know, 0.045 or something like that difference, but it, 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 it does help. Uh, so we went out to the two banks that we do business with, which is UBT, uh, Union Bank and Trust, which is based out of Bonner, and Bank Midwest here locally, who is our, our depository bank. Both of them are held by larger bank companies and said, here's the proposal, give us your, your responses. And in reality, they were both within, you know, very close. One was 3.33%, the other 3.34%. So then you get into what the fees are, what the fee costs are. Uh, and uh, on this particular case, UBT waived the uh, setting up an escrow account. We generally pay using an escrow just because it, that way it doesn't fit our books and we have a lot of financial pieces to it. Uh, and so based on that, they were the low overall cost but in reality, they were within $50 of each other, to be real honest of it. But so part of this is the decision to acquire these pieces. The other part is the financing, <coughs> which is our recommendation to use UBT, which, again, we've used both of these in the past. They both do an excellent service for us. We would have no problem working with either one of them, which is, in this particular case, they both are very competitive, and, and uh, UBT is slightly less on this. So the one resolution covers both purchase and the yeah. finance? I would say that the motion, that the resolution covers the finance, okay. and the motion can include the purchase of and oh, adoption okay. of the resolution. That's what I wanted to get cleared up. Right. So the motion would be to purchase and then, and then right. the financial part. Okay. Basically, the motion is going to be to acquire three Zoll okay. x series cardiac monitors, one Dell EMC. Uh, network storage device of the rest of it, and the adoption of resolution 2018 okay. within these purchases. What's the life cycle of the monitors? Seven to eight years before the technology is no longer supported. Um, and then you're potentially going to add another two to three beyond that of what you could buy or purchase off of their distribution house for parts are completely eliminated. I would note that so the monitors we had while I I believe two of them were new and one of them was used when yes. we first started the service, but they weren't new technology, so they were toward the end of their life cycle as far as technology goes, but at that point in time, that's you know, how we set up those. So we do maintain uh, devices on our fire truck in both ambulances, so it prevents us from having to you know, remember if we put this in the this truck, whatever, because we run a paramedic engine, so this is a critical you know, component to being able to have the engine can literally operate separately from the ambulance if you had two cardiac type calls simultaneously. 
they can still address them. Obviously, you don't trade for it, so they need a fire truck, but they can address the medical condition. Did I cover that right, gentlemen? Mm -hmm. well, Chief, would these be linked up? This is just for my information. Would these be linked up with the which hospitals would they be linked up with? And I'm you know, just kind of curious how that really works. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but the technology is kind of similar how you email those. Um, you can capture your 12 lead in the field, send it out there, and it goes to a receiving station and be distributed to the nearest hospitals along the ones that have the cardiac care stations. Such as Providence does have a cardiac cath lab. So, you know, part of the transition would be, here you go, this is what we're seeing in the field. So what it does is allow a cardiologist to look at it because you have an SD elevation, and which cath lab is closest and open at that time that you put somebody on the table to do the cardiac catheterization. The goal in the field is 90 minutes from time that we identify the steel elevation in the field that we have in a cath lab. So it's kind of similar to the cloud or anything else's house. Just sitting out there at the receiving station. And what it does is Zoll takes it, transfers that data into a, a terabyte or a bitabyte or some sort of bike that flies out there and then goes to the ERs and then from there they sit there and get the cardiologist look at and say, yep, this person needs catheterization. Here we got the data. So it is linked up. I mean, that's. Yes, sir. This is just for my own information, my own curiosity. That so, way we can sit there and if you have having the bad heart attacks of all heart attacks, we can identify the dark guys in the field, confirm it with the cardiologist, and if Providence has an opening in the table and eight minutes or less, we've got you rolling in the cath lab. I want we you to get it, but I don't want it to be for me. <laughs> Today, what they do is they, they would, they, the monitors can still be the monitor, they can print out. Yeah. The strip, put it on the basically the clipboard with the patient, and it, it unless it's changed from, and 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 they can take that in. I mean, they can say in the field, "Hey, this is what we're seeing," and then here's the data, but we can't send it electronically from the field back. Is that right. It? Thank you. Thank you. Somewhat I remember from my head. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to adopt Resolution 2018-02 which would authorize the acquisition of three Zoll cardiac monitors and a network storage device to be financed through Union Bank and Trust. Second. I have a question. Yes, go ahead. So the $34,500 that's being paid out of the special tax sales tax fund, does that is, is that amount depleted now that we just are we are we using every penny out of it? Yeah. I, I don't know. We I think approximately. And my my reason for asking this is yeah. if we have money in it, why would we borrow money and pay interest without? Why, I mean, why wouldn't we just go ahead and pay this off and be done with it, and not pay interest on money? That's not. I'm, no, it's a good point. Uh, so our ending. So right now, assuming the payments. And with no other acquisition, I think part of our thing is to have balance for future fire truck, large capital expenditures, and just not trying to deplete the cash. In. But it's it's. What is the amount of interest that will be paid on the duration of this loan? Uh, it's about the total interest for everything is about sixty five hundred over the three years. So it's a three year payment cycle. It's mainly a cash management. As, as much as anything. I mean, it's, we've had this discussion even at the audit levels a couple of times where I was saying, well, at what point do you pay cash versus borrow money? It, it, you know, right now we're estimating when we adopted the budget with this purchase, uh, you having an ending balance of about 187000 So we now, could pay for it outright. We could pay for it outright. It is a possibility. Now, I will say this, the lease doesn't prevent us from early pay, and there's no penalty for early pay. So if 12 months from now, let's say, or even when we get to first payment cycle, which is July, so the first payment is July 15th, we could pay the full amount plus whatever that interest is for that six-month period and pay it all. So that, that, we do have that option at any time. Well, I think what will happen is I think a lot of people say that when they go and get loans. Oh, I paid off right then. They never do. They just like, because they get used to their $200 a month payment, and they just go, well, I'm not going to pay it off early. I always keep paying my 200 Now, I mean, so the question is if, you know, three years of $6,500, saving $6,500, I mean, if 
if uh, that would leave as a balance, I mean, I'm just throwing numbers out there, around $40,000, is that correct? In the special? Uh, well, the, the purchase price was 98000 roughly for the three yeah. years, I mean, the, the principal amount. So we wouldn't pay, so the uh, the storage device cannot be paid for out of the special sales tax because it was an out. There's no allocation for police. And I have a question. That, and I, that's my next question yeah. on that also. About but, so you got about 98000 is the cash pay for uh, for that item. We so don't have any cash. Leave, roughly leave us on 90000 90, then in that fund. That would be the special yeah, tax. We would estimate. Also, the, if we just, when we went out for the proposal, we also, uh, said it would be we did it individually. If we did, just, so we purchased the EMS cardiac monitors by themselves and just went with the lease purchase for the network storage by our infrastructure as well. Yeah. As well. So that, that 6,500 savings, is a, it's a, it, it'll be smaller than that on the math right front anyway, but it's not, it's not a, a, exactly what it's saying. I mean, 6,500 for the full, but you're, but you're right. I mean, it is the question of do you pay cash or do you use a financing tool. Uh, part of the question is when we go, I mean, we know that in the next couple of years we're going to have probably at least one large capital purchase in the fire department at some point from a fire truck replacement over the next couple of years and or we know probably an ambulance. Now, currently the ambulances are paid out of the general fund. It'll be a decision at that point we want to pay for it out there. So my next question is on the storage. How are, uh, I mean, I was always under the impression that uh, the storage of the cloud, which is free or nearly free, I don't, I don't know what the cloud is, sorry, we still don't have there, I don't have any idea. But um, why this method versus, and, and what have we, what are other cities doing that would uh, lead us to think that this is the direction that we need to go to spend. I'm going to turn that one over to the chief because he, he did the research on this as why item A or B. So. And what was that total cost for the, the storage? Uh, 40, 43. Okay. <coughs> so if I understood the question, what's, what's the difference? Uh, why the decision for the network attached storage device rather than the cloud? And the cloud for us is not free. Uh, it's in excess of probably twenty-one thousand dollars. What you have to understand is n number one, the security associated with the cloud, and number two, that the it has to be compatible. The, the direction that we choose to store the information has to be compatible with the vendor. And there are a number of options, but the vendor has their own storage capacity which they buy from, say, Google or Amazon or somewhere else, and then they pass on the cost. And it's really about uh, gigabyte, terabyte storage. The level that you store it, uh, the more the cost. There was some uh, in, in the past when this first emerged is that the money from these companies is going to be made not necessarily in the sale of the devices, but more in that, that kind of storage. And what's happened for us, we have to start from the beginning for us, is that we, we pursued grant funding for most of our technology infrastructure. The infrastructure the city has today, we started 10 years ago, and every year tried to add some technology enhancement through grant funding. And we've done quite a bit in that, uh, through that capacity. Uh, essentially, in 2015, we added the HD capacity video uh, devices for the officers. We've always had in-car cameras, and of course, you know, we had the body cameras some, some years ago. But what we've moved to is something more intuitive in the body cameras that they interact with our in-car video. Okay, and so we pursued that. That's an HD quality, uh, about above 720. It varies just depending on on the, the environment. But essentially, HD quality stuff, of course, takes up more space. In addition to that, uh, those purchases, we also purchased the server system that now the entire city uses. So in, in addition to all the video that we manage on that one server, which we had two servers in the past, and we consolidated to one virtual server. Okay, it runs several servers inside the one appliance, if you will. 
So we have our video management software runs from that one server and it stores all of our capacity. And that is where we have all the problem is we added the, uh, we added the fire department to the city network and the entire network, every, every piece of the city runs through one server appliance, which is a virtual machine. So not to get overly technical about the network, but that's our network and most of that equipment was grant funded over the last 10 years to get to where we are today. So what has happened is we produce so much HD video that the server has run out of its capacity. So the next thing was to explore options, in, and I'll back up just a minute. That capacity uh, was not due for another 12 plus months. So in, when we added the city and then attached the fire department to the network, it just started building layers upon layers. And our financial data is the second largest piece of data that we have on that server, aside from the video. Okay, so because that's the way that that whole program has several modules. It's a lot of data from, from historically <coughs> as well. So it's a very large program, and it's also on that same virtual machine. So what's happened is we've layered this thing up, and it's full. So then we needed an immediate solution because it started interrupting our ability to function. It's, it put the server down. So the entire city was offline. We couldn't use the financials and those sorts of things. So we had to make some provisions, such as expanding the servers to its full capacity, which was another four terabytes. And that's all we have, and we have about 12% of that left. And that was two months ago. So we, we just have so much data from all avenues of the city. Now back to the original question, why this over that? We work in partnership with our vendors in a number of ways. We have a third-party vendor for our uh, uh, network that, that services our, all of our computers and things like that. Uh, that's standard, and they have some uh, very high-level engineers. Uh, we also work with our vendor for our video software, and they do offer that as one of their services uh, to store stuff on the cloud through their, their video server and some, some of these other things. It really became life cycle expensive it, and it varies if we produce more video that cost increases so it's not set in stone and as the market demands they could raise their prices so essentially that was one component we looked at the other component was what I proposed today was looking at the Dell EMC product and this Isilon product it was highly recommended it's been researched for law enforcement video and it's very compatible they've done an entire study and, it's, and they specifically can work and, and compatible with our vendor for our video software and our hardware. So essentially what it comes down to is we go back to the cash, cash management. It's not a, a full out $43,000 today. The $15,000 gives us some room. We won't be paying $21,000 plus, if you will, for our data throughout the years. And, and every I think there's a 36-month contract that we have to commit to. Uh, it also... Doesn't, it really doesn't give us the control over what happens with where it is, where it's stored, and that sort of thing. Uh, we have the opportunity, if we have the other appliance, the, the Dell EMC, we can move the video uh, software and the storage capacity, all this data, off of our server. If, if we use the cloud component, we still have to have some mechanisms and some temporary cache storage on the server to then transfer it to the cloud. That's the way it has to work. So the appliance gives us an opportunity to move it all off of there and just use it for one thing, and that's video evidence. So we have this large capacity. It's crashing our server, for lack of better terms, and we have an opportunity now to not pay as much. We don't know what the variable cost with the cloud will be. It's compatible with our, our video management software. And it really gives us an opportunity to separate the entire service that way. And so uh, by recommendation, uh, we decided to go this way. We pursued the grant. There was, for at the state level, uh, once again, uh, of, of 10 submissions, we've been denied twice. And this was one of those. It's not a priority funding product. And there was $1.2 million available with over $3 million in requests. So non-priority, we, we didn't make that cut for this time. Otherwise, we would have been projecting to have this in the in the budget and be paying for it that way. Uh, but I think this is the best way to go. We get the local control. Uh, we have uh, the storage capacity. We move everything off of our server, and it doesn't kind of conflict or interfere with the operations that we already have 
with the city side of things, if you will. So that's really what we looked at. We thought it was the most cost-effective option. What it also offers is that at some point, we can then expand extensively for less cost than we would pay the one-time fee to the cloud. And it also offers us an opportunity that we can then send data to a cloud for just individual storage, such as you have a lifetime uh, uh, requirement for retention, a homicide, if you will, something very drastic. We can take that piece of that video and then have an opportunity to, to send it to that cloud where it's not taking up the capacity on the server at a later date. So we can expand into that uh, a cloud environment when we're ready to do so at a much letter, lesser cost simply because we are not putting out there 16 terabytes of data in a year because we have a lot of data. It's, I, it's huge. I thought that one of the concerns was um, on the cloud was the security of the cloud-based storage. So now we're saying that we would put a homicide on something that we had issues with the security. Yeah, we would, uh, so it, it's, and again, I'm not an expert in the cloud environment by any means, but from what I understand, we get the security through the, the cloud environment our vendor who would then, of course, pass the costs on to us, so for example, and that's done by volume. So there, there, is, there are certainly industry standards that would have to be met and that sort of thing, but there would be a time that we'd have opportunity to research that and make sure these one or two or ten things or a year's worth at some point, we might be able to... Uh, to put it there and it would be secure and pass industry standards and things like that. But we, that's somewhat later down the road because we'll have capacity up to a petabyte, which is absolutely huge, uh, that we could, that's five to, five to seven years easily before we have to consider that. So really we capture uh, the 43,000 over the three year period and then, then it's, it's really owned and operated by us and we're not having that reoccurring 20,000 plus-ish that may vary after after that three year period. You said you had, we have a, a twelve percent capacity left in the server? Yeah, somewhere in there. It varies from day to day. Right. How, how much will this free up? Uh, about sixteen terabytes. Which is how long uh, how long will we need to will this how much time will this buy us before we need to worry about our mm -hmm. our server? Yeah, I would say, well, uh, on our server that, that has a capacity of uh, another four, so 20 terabytes. So once we bring the video capac the piece of it off of that server, we open up. Uh, it's that's that's a long time to fill up another, uh, you know, 10 to 14 terabytes. It just depends on. on Months, years. Oh, that's years. Yeah, three, four years at our uh, before before we may have to start looking at uh, the storage piece of it. Now, of course. <clears throat> All of this stuff changes year to year. The advances, of, you know, they don't, uh, you know, XP is no longer supported. All these things. We have a we have a virtual machine, a 2008 server inside the server that's outdated. So we have to then update to a 2012 R. But we've had that 2008 uh, between 2008 and 09. We've had it that long, and but it's, it's those are things are getting outdated and not serviced anymore. So sometimes the life cycle of the product itself and its service. But I would say the answer is we would get five years easily uh, out of the server, and that's with the capacity. But that doesn't mean necessarily the uh, that it holds up, you know, moving parts, that sort of stuff, you know. But it's well maintained, and it's, it was a quality, uh, a very high end product when we purchased it. How long have we been running at this 12% capacity? Well, um, we've been to zero, and which is not good on the operating system. So um, the last two months, we uh, we're back to that maybe that 12 percent ish, 15 to 12 percent left, which makes that could be nearly a terabyte. It just depends, but one terabyte we could we could eat that up in a minute. So what it my question is, we're having this study done that talks about facilities and right. and locations and um, what happens if we end up with a substation at North? How does that uh, affect? I know that if you're on the cloud. That doesn't affect it because you're on the cloud. So I'm, I'm thinking, like, just like we just spent twenty-five thousand dollars to have the study done for, to tell us that we need to be thinking five years down the road, ten years down the road. So, with that being said, I mean, should we not wait until we hear back on this study to find out facilities? And I'm not talking from the fire department side. 
what I'm talking about on, on, on this right here. If we're operating right now and, and we're making it, well, we're we need to spend I, 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 thousand dollars today. So I, I think a couple of points that I so if I if I'm understanding right, there are costs if we went to cloud is twenty one thousand roughly annually. Well, yeah, those are annual. Up. I'm not saying right now. Right. I'm saying we're we're operating right now at twelve percent. Right. And we're, we're, we're also not, not, and we're making it. But we're not capturing all of our police department video that we should be capturing. Yeah, look, what's happened is we need to move to, we have a, uh, a retention matrix, uh, which is well aligned. The problem is it, it, it uh, we need to move it to a 90 day as a minimum for all video. And you have to understand how it's labeled on the, on the end user and all this other stuff that goes along with the process of capturing and retaining and storing the data, but in, in a sense, what we need to do because of just uh, industry alignment and recommendations is we need to retain all of our video at a minimum of 90 days. So we need to ex extend our uh, management and storage of that video in order to ensure that we have time to uh, uh, you know, review it, make sure it's labeled correctly. I'll give you an example. Every day, several times a day, the video is tested. That tested video then is captured and, and stored on the server. And it's labeled for a retention as an equipment check. <coughs> well, that equipment check label is done by an officer who, who then maybe scroll down too far, it needs to be double checked or whatever. Now maybe a criminal case gets labeled accidentally by that first box that could be checked. And it's, but it's gonna disappear in 24 hours. We saw that as, a, as an error that just is, uh, you know, you're, you're just doing you know, the same thing over and over and you kind of just miss that box or whatever. It's subject to human error. But what happens is that stuff disappears permanently. And if you can understand, maybe your criminal case is fairly important to you and to us as well, and we don't have, want to have to explain where our video went, why we lost it or something like that. And, and, and even though there's an audit trail and stuff, you can't recover. And so what we need to do is in order to have the time to review the videos, to make sure they're labeled correctly and all that, we need to store them at the 90-day minimum. And then, of course, there's a number of videos that have to be stored forever. And we still have to have access to them uh, throughout a year, two years, whatever. It took the uh, last homicide we had, it took uh, about almost two years uh, before we came to some resolve in, in that issue. So, it, so that needs to be then uh, retained probably its lifetime for any appeals and all the other stuff that goes with it. That's a massive amount of data. It's uh, so the, the reference to the 12 such percent. That that's a month or less. And then we're back to we have no way to expand the capacity. Uh, we have no other place to go. And then the entire city is subject to this kind of disruption of service until we can rectify the situation. Chief, my question for you: Will this will next year's uh, payment be in the budget in the in the regular budget? Yes. Okay. This year. You're saying that do you believe you that the department, I think it says departments, uh, or is this yeah. one department? Yeah, department. department. The police department, department, department making budgetary adjustments so that the roughly 15,000 yeah. is absorbed into this year's budget without really increasing Correct. expenditures? Correct. Yeah. Yes, sir. And then next year will be in the budget that we see. This summer, sure. Yeah. I, I, the other thing I was about to say, relative to the, the physical device and the computers and things, regardless of what we do, facilities, I, they're going to get incorporated and moved in. So even if we had a, a remote site, that's probably not going to be where the, the server is based out of. I mean, today I we I base agree. the service is based out of, it, it's actually kind of an odd situation. The physical devices in the police department, but the way the wiring goes, it, 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 it comes here, so some of our stuff comes in here and it has to go there and vice versa. So obviously that would be a, somewhat of a plan. The other thing is, I know we talked a lot about police video and, the, and, and their needs, but as financial documents, court documents, just admin type of documents, keep building that. You know, Word files are fairly small. We could probably delete every Word file on the computer and, and from what I understand, I'm certainly not that correct necessary. It doesn't make much impact. But even our court documents, so so court documents are all paper. Now they're almost all electronic and they too have 
potential video if they've got to go with the case file and pictures and things like that. So while the the biggest user or, or, or you know the one that's drawing it down is is video because video just uses more data anyways, and that happens to be in the police department. It's really more of a, a system wide impact, and I, I think that's what we want. To, and then again, from a cost standpoint, you know, yeah, we can do the cloud, but if you're spending twenty thousand a year, even you're you're from just a pure dollar standpoint ahead of the game. Now, you know, far security and all those things, I mean, that's part of the reason we use Net Standard. They help us do a lot of, you know, they are managing, manage our IT. We don't actually have managed IT. It's something we've talked about. We don't have an IT person on staff. The chief kind of gets to double as that person. He's our guy. Uh, and, For 10 years. So yeah. Not kind of. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, the way I understand it, then, if it's $21,000 a year, we basically are saving a year yeah. over the, you know, the, this being a three year lease. Right. We're saving at least one year of that $21,000. Correct? We're paying, right. paying $43,000 for the storage unit. We'd be paying $63,000 right. for three years of cloud storage. And then if we get three more years out of the equipment, we've saved another $61,000. So, so this would be the most economical approach then at that point in time. Yes, correct. The twenty-one thousand was an annual, every year twenty-one thousand cost. I thought it was a one-time cost. So I wrote down. Hey, yeah. No, these are. There's a three-year contract, and those are annual fees, from what we understand. Twenty-one thousand every yeah. year. Again, that's proprietary to the vendor, specifically. So there may be the other options. I just don't know what they are. And just to confirm, our situation right now is not acceptable for industry standards. We're already losing video. Yes, ma'am. No, it's not acceptable. That's correct. But though our current matrix is not wrong, it's just the you know the Department of Justice, those Institute of Technology, those kinds of things recommend the 90-day period. It gives gives opportunity to review and and just manage the data because there's so much. It's hard for one person or even the officer who generated. It to go back and look at everything they've ever done. So, so we just we don't have time to wait a year or something like that. We're already behind the That's correct. And, and that's why we got ahead of the game and we, we did the research much earlier than we did <coughs> today. We waited for the grant cycle, made the application to the for the grant, and then we were denied. And that takes a little while. It's uh, mid to late October. Uh, and then we waited for the year change to go ahead and make the presentation. We did expand the server in the last two months to make sure to see if that would help, but it just it just really hasn't helped. It's somewhat critical. Mr. Rare, I'd like to call the question. Okay, the question has been called. Motion to approve the use purchase. Second. And uh, to finance. Would the clerk please call roll? Yes. Kahar? Yes. A lot? Yes. Driver? Yes. Study. Yes. Thank you, Chief. I appreciate your No, thank you. And we will. I mean, you, you make a very good point, Mr. Stites, and so we will look at that on the on the cash basis. I mean, whether or not, as we move forward, whether on this side or potentially others, we want to look at that. I, one of the things I want to do is, so our sales tax fund is about, we're about in year four of that, I think, now, three or four. And so, you know, the biggest purchase we have is the fire truck that we bought, and that had, I think, seven years of payments. Uh, most of the other things have been relatively short-term, one to three years. But the big items we know coming in, in, you know, the biggest items from just a pure equipment are going to be fire truck ambulances. I mean, those are, you know, we know those are big ticket items. I mean, and so, one of my concerns has been, you know, hopefully that sales tax fund we justified that it's been a good, a good fund going forward. I mean, we've done roads, we've done parks, and we've done fires, but it still requires a vote to renew it. And we don't want to get out there where we have a bunch of things financed eight, ten years past the expiration date of the sales tax fund. So that is one of the things we want to make sure we watch as we move forward in using these funds. Okay, next item on the agenda will be uh, let's consider authorizing city manager to approve change order number one for the 2017 street maintenance project. 
Well, I will address this, and you know, Ms. Snyder's here. She could probably uh, uh, do this. This is a little bit new. Uh, this is something that Ms. Snyder brought to us. I think it is the way we should be doing it, uh, which is basically what you're seeing is that when we went out to bid on our street maintenance project, the council authorized a sum of the hundred and fifty seven thousand four eighty six and and ninety cents. And like any of these projects, there are change orders that come along and sometimes these are going to be higher and sometimes they're going to be lower in in the overall process. And so what we've done here is to show what those projects were, what we overran in some areas, underran in other areas, with the total at the at the bottom line is that in our particular case for this program, we saved about $5,400 over what we anticipated spending. And we'll have others that will be over because change orders occur during the project and so typically the engineer, uh, you know, the contractor will say, hey, we didn't know we were going to run into this or we have to add additional curves or, or something. The engineer will review it and say, yes, this is appropriate especially when we already have a line item. So we already have a unit cost, but we just had to buy more asphalt or more curb or something. Other times we run into a problem like we did uh, up on uh, 100 and, is that 104th and Edge Hill? Is that right? 102nd and Edge Hill, where we had a lot of water, a lot of sub-base. I mean, we couldn't just not fix it, so you fix it. It's a change order. We got a pricing engineer reviews it. I sign off on it and, and we move forward. But this is an opportunity to kind of bring it back to the council, kind of full transparency so you can see this and literally authorize that final change order or change order but in a single document. We've now completed 2017, it's done, and this is the cost that's allocated to it. We'll be happy to answer questions about any pieces of the project. Uh, so we're just asking that you authorize me to go ahead and approve and sign change order number one and close out this project. We're just authorizing that we're closing out the project. Right. That you're authorizing a change order in the negative. Was it a reduction in cost? I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm gonna. I'm sure I'm going to bring you one at some point in the future. As much as we try not to, that will be the other direction. But. Uh, we, we try to hold those. We try to hold those. That'll be in our study this morning. Yes. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to authorize the city manager to approve and sign change order number one for the 2017 street maintenance project. Okay. I'm going to light here. Jim, no. No, she got you covered. <laughs> It has been moved and seconded to authorize the um, approval of the change order number one for 2017 street maintenance project with the clerk please call. Adam? Yes. Kmar? Yes. Block? Yes. Driver? Yes. Stein. Yes. How long do we move to this? Um, I think, uh, I think probably till 8-10 is going to be appropriate. I was hoping, I, I think we'll spend more time than if you want to do it last, we can do last, but I think you need at least 15 minutes. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to recess you in the executive session. Um, for sure, we got to go to ASA. Pardon? We got to go to ASA 4319B2 for consultation with the city attorney regarding information that would be deemed privileged in the attorney client relationship and pursuant to KSA 754319B6. Relating to the acquisition of real property for municipal purposes, with the opening meeting to resume in the city council chambers at 8:05. And you sure. did say recess, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Recess into yes. executive session. It has been moved and second to recess into executive session. Return at 8:05. Would the clerk please call? Adam. Yes. Kmar. Yes. Mollock. Yes. Driver. Yes. Second. Yes. Sit next door. Then a motion and a second to return to regular session with the clerk please call the roll. Adams? Yes. Taylor? Yes. 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 And there is right there is no action necessary. Okay. So we'll move right into reports. Uh, You're it. It is uh, National Football League night, so I don't know if you guys get done. Uh, the only thing I have is 
we will expect that we will have another workshop prior to our next meeting. I think I told you that before. Uh, mainly to do some just general count like liability training, coma core, just okay. as a group, uh, partially with Ms. Kagar coming on. It'll be a good training there, and it's a good refresher for all of us. So that's really what we, right now we see the focus of that. We'll probably have a number of action items just you know, kind of catching up from uh, last year's stuff now as we get to the beginning. Uh, so we'll we'll move forward with that. There's just some administrative functions that have to be taken care of the first year. So uh, that's at this point all I have and let's get questions come up. Okay. Chief of the uh, nothing, thank you. Chief Widow. One small thing, since everybody has inquired what the Cranley Recruiter Charity did this year uh, for the community. Um, I'm on behalf of a couple slides into it, Zach. I, I was gonna, oh, okay. Wait. That was back at the rain. I was like trying to figure out all the uh, rain. Way. Yeah. You're going forward, yeah. You're ruining the whole thing. That's what you saw. Well, uh, the police officers and firefighters. Um, that was for this year. Had a pretty, pretty uh, substantial year. Grand Prix Grand Prix Grand Prix Grand Prix Christmas charity. Expanded uh, <laughs> on it this year. We bought uh, sixty some backpacks for the community school um, up here in Edwardsville Elementary to cover for students participating in Hurricane Harvey Relief, where the charity did buy some items towards the donations that occurred from the community. You can go to the next slide there. I uh, did the first motorcycle run that we had this year. It brought in a little over uh, two thousand dollars next time. Uh, that day, it did cooperate with us that day. The same with the golf scramble on the next slide, uh, which occurred on the day that was seventy-two to four and was forty at tea time. <laughs> so where are we at? We weren't questioning. We were at home. We weren't questioning the courage the weather. But uh, again, the golf scramble pulled in uh, over almost two thousand dollars. It was done. Total this year was six thousand four hundred twenty-four dollars and fifty-four cents. Um, we started out with uh, the idea to take care of ten families. Next slide, Zach. We ended up caring for sixteen families in need at Christmas. Uh, we did not stop until about three days before Christmas actually hit. Are those all Edwardsville? All families? Edwardsville families. Um, I can tell you where the majority of them live, but uh, if you want that information, give it to me on the side. Um, Ended up having the, the biggest shopping trip to Barnard Springs and the most multiple shopping trips to Barnard Springs. Um, Walmart uh, had the Christmas breakfast morning at Earth, which is on the next slide. We did have to move out the air trailer to make room in the fire station for all the items. It should be uh, some more of our support help we have between Kiwanis and the middle school. Kiwanis Club helped that Saturday morning feed it. 16 families, 19 girls, 16 boys, 21 adults. Give you an idea of perspective of what six thousand four hundred dollars buys: two hundred twenty-four pounds of turkey, eighty-four pounds of ham, one hundred sixty pounds of hamburger, eighty pounds of rice, eighty pounds of beans, one hundred sixty pounds of potatoes, eighty pounds of pancake mix, eighty pounds of cereal, thirty-two pounds of stuffing mix, forty-eight pounds of pasta noodles, thirty-six pounds of peanut butter, nine hundred sixty cans of canned vegetables, one hundred fifty cans of soup. Bought 112 shirts, 85 pants, 35 coats, 35 mittens and hats, 35 pairs of shoes, 160 pairs of socks, and 80 pairs of underwear, not food toys. So that is what the police and firefighters did in the last fiscal year for Grand Cruiser. So that's all I've got. Good job. Thank you. Thank you.
big asset to Edwardsville, and I don't, I know most communities don't have that, so that sets Edwardsville apart, and that's a great thing. Here. I have a statement that I just want to read, and I, it just, it's a concern of mine, and hopefully it's a concern of the whole community and the whole county. It concerns the water slide that's littered on it. And personally, as a citizen of Wyandotte County and Edwardsville, I request that some attempt be made to have that water slide at Slitterbron torn down. I've been told there are still ongoing investigations into the liability issues through courts, insurance, or whatever. Regardless of this process, I think it's a horrible reminder of a tragic loss of life that we are reminded of any time we travel through western Wyandotte County in the area of Village West and Village South at Edwardsville, where this monstrosity is visible. Not to mention the national media exposure when covering functions at the Speedway and the tourists who visit our county. To me, this process has taken too long to finish and needs to be a priority for our county, Kansas City, Kansas, and the state of Kansas. I think we as taxpaying citizens of this county and state deserve that this eyesore be destroyed as soon as possible. This is my opinion, but I don't think very many people would disagree with me on this. Thank you for that. Um, James, thank you for all your work. You've done this the last several years under the police department, fire department, all your support, all your helpers. I know. I think you drove a lot of items down to Texas, didn't you? Sure. You forgot to mention that. You probably forget to mention a lot of you do. Thank you so much for always going above and beyond and all your tremendous people that help you, people that donate, all the behind the scenes. Thank you so much. And Carolyn, welcome. Welcome to the cruise. Sure. Well, I don't forget. Welcome to the group. <laughs> <laughs> um, Trash on 435. I had called and uh, spoke to you, Mike, um, a couple weeks ago. My dad and I were coming back from out of town. We were on 435 heading north, and we crossed over uh, the river and immediately noticed when we hit Wyandotte County. And, um, and I was ashamed when I pulled it, when we kept driving, and we just kept looking. In our, in our medians and off to the side, and there was just trash everywhere. I personally made a call to Death and Ball to, as, as an Edwardsville resident. They act like they had no idea what I was talking about. They kept wanting to know what truck that it fell off of, and I said, probably all of them. And they asked me if, um, that if I saw it fall off of an actual waste management truck because they contract with several uh, other trash companies and it could be their responsibility. So clearly an attempt to shirk their duties of picking trash up. If you drive out of here or drive tomorrow, you will notice immediately when you drop, cross over into, you know, where the police sit there in a the little cutout uh, south of, uh, uh, holiday drive and then right there is where all the trash is picked up and there's I have seen those guys that are a little pickup truck with two or three <coughs> out here one time once and we were assured as a council that they would make that an attempt and make that a priority when we were negotiating trash pickup that they would uh, make efforts now <clears throat> I want I would like for them to have to uh, somebody has to know when those guys are working and when they're not. The, the, the guy I talked to act like it was, well, they just get sent out and we don't really have control over where they go. Well, I, I don't believe that because they're clearly not hitting our area. And our area looks terrible. So I don't know if you got anywhere or not. I but. have not, but I will say that I, I did reach out to them. I did ask for a report for at least a 12 month period saying. Mm -hmm what days, what times. I've also reached out to the state, to, to, to Leroy, who's the, the regional manager, uh, and 
thus far, I've said I've not gotten a very satisfactory response, but it's we're still on it. But I mean, but you're right. And I will say, I drove that particular day. We spoke, and I don't remember. I think I was out. Maybe it was the next day. Uh, I did see a crew. I think it was either today or Friday. It was right at the bridge. But that's the first time I've seen seen them out here. I mean, I do see. Sporadic. I don't think periodically because I would assume it's done on a regular basis, but sporadic. Well, I don't know what we can do as a city to address the state level. I mean, uh, I'm, I understand we're. No, it's um, well, I, I would, here's what I would suggest. I mean, I will reach out again there, but potentially it might be appropriate if we even just send a letter to the state reps from. Represent us and ask them if they can help intervene on the act. Well, what I will do is invite both of our commissioners right. for this area to attend our next city council meeting. And if we could voice our concerns to them, if, if that's okay. Yeah, that's, I'll, I'll leave that to the council. That's a, but I, I, you know what, we need some answers. I'm yeah. tired of talking about trash. <coughs> We're always talking about trash. And, and it's, I mean, it's embarrassing. We talk about the gateway to our city. I don't care if you're on 435, K32, or 1st, whatever street you're on. I mean, it looks terrible. I mean, it, and it's just not getting any better. It's getting worse. They mow over it. It turns one piece into 10,000 pieces. I don't understand it. Nobody's getting off there to pick up the trash. Secondly, I had talked um, about a community service right. aspect where the city where we do something. I brought that up over several council meetings ago, and I'd like to know if we got anywhere on that. Yet. Well, I did a uh, couple of follow ups, and I, I don't know if he's active. I did speak to the sheriff about whether they were using work crews. Uh, they were not on a very limited base. He did talk a little bit, and he was going to follow up, and I need to get it's, back with it's him. It's not the sheriff that does it. Well, no, I see. They do some project under the sheriff's office, but then under the KCK, he was going to follow up with them. We've also spoken internally with the court about when do we do probate, you know, do we have people that do community service. I think the biggest, the biggest challenge is managing that, but I understand, again, I spoke to the sheriff and he gave me some connections, but it was right at the Christmas, New Year's time. Uh, I guess it's through the Kansas City Crime Commission, but they have an organization under there that kind of manages the paperwork. So if, if I'm given, you know, if the Edwardsville Court gives me uh, community service, they have the resources and documents to say, yes, they came to do, here's where you can go do community service, Edwardsville's a place, and then I got Probably the hardest part is just going to be figuring out. So when a person comes to do community service, somebody can <coughs> be there, sign off. But, you know, so you know, there's there's a cost, and well, we already have officers working. Right. Well, I don't know that they're going to be able to stand out there and watch. Somebody. Why? We have them standing in here. Well, I don't think that's a big excuse of resource. Yeah. That's personally what I feel. Well, yeah. I want to see the trash picked up in the city. There's a there's a program in place where that happens. I was involved in that program, and and I would like to uh, continue looking, and we can discuss whether it's a use, good use of the okay. those people, uh, right. personnel or not later. But so we have been. I mean, I don't have all your answers, but 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 did make you know several inquiries. Pushing it off and pushing it off and pushing it off, right. and we're just going to get more trash and more trash and more trash, and it's never going to get addressed. Um, I would agree with bad things looking out on the highway. No yeah. doubt about it. Um, is there any kind of a move towards fire departments doing video, on site video stuff as well, like the police officers do? Yes, sir. Um, there are some agencies starting to do uh, body cams on EMS calls as well, and helmet cams on uh, fire service calls. We have just uh, started looking at potentially trying to fund that might be our other priorities that I had to straighten up within the firehouse before we went that route with it. Um, our obligation to 
tracking video with HIPAA and everything else would also cause other additional security concerns. So before we even sit there and start the project to look at that, we're still trying to sit there and gather what the Kansas and U.S. Uh, legislative laws will allow on that type of reporting, um, and then also on top of the HIPAA violations. So we're still probably 16 to 18 months out before we even start looking at some incorporating something like that. I assume from a liability standpoint, that that was going to be another the next step. <coughs> yes, sir. There are uh, cameras being used in a lot of services. Um, recording the front and the rear of the ambulances for traffic uh, collision purposes. There are services that are recording the back patient compartments um, due to training and other aspects of it. Uh, but you're talking about you're, you're rechanging the design and features of any ones that do have to sit there and inspect that. It would be uh, more cost effective to do it on a new ambulance purchase and launch it from that point than trying to retrofit everything back out. I just wondered if the industry were moving that way. Yes, sir, it is. Um, not, as, not as quick as the police department has gone to because of the, the nature of the type of jobs, but there are places that are trying to take that. I think we had looked at one point, been some time back, uh, about, you know, maybe reuse of some cameras on, for vehicles, just for, if more than anything, just for a liability, if some case you're involved in an accident, but you're seeing that in personal vehicles even more now, where people have, uh, you know, they're, they're, because the cost has come down so much more. In our case, it's the it's the privacy issues more so. You know, if it's in your personal car, you don't keep the video. You know, no issue. We put it in a city vehicle, don't keep the video. There's an issue. Yeah, so some of that, but but I think there is more push to so. We just gave uh, some of our leftover, our original, uh, what we call scorpions. Uh, That's what body worn cameras. Uh, they're just beat to heck, but uh, we had a couple of them that would still work, so we gave them to maybe do some test runs with it, see how it worked, see what they were like. Uh, it's, it's data technology, but it's but at least they can test with it. So. Play around with it. Yeah. That's what I can remember. <clears throat> Council mm -hmm. would be hard. I had an additional one every mayor like the last one. Yeah, it's a question. I, have, I actually have a real concern when the trash and that we're not concerned about that and we're worried about the way that manpower is delegated is the program that I went through, SEPTED evaluations and SEPTED program with crime prevention through environmental design. And one of those things is trash and how your city <coughs> is perceived by trash. The broken window theory, that if the person has the window broken on your block and then eventually you kind of start thinking, well, they don't have to fix their window, I don't have to pick up my window, I don't have to fix my window, and then it just spreads it's like a disease. And I want to use our personnel wisely, sure. where it makes sense. We are already paying them. And I think to just say that right off the bat that that's not the best use for our police department when that falls directly in with codes, blight, and crime is ridiculous. I'm finished. Hey, I'm going to stick with it. Sure, I don't think sure it's ridiculous. But we will, we will. there again, uh, but I do not disagree with you about the site, the, the, the issue of trash. That's just been something we've dealt with forever and never been able to seem to get anything done. Well, maybe we need to implement a program like what I'm talking about so we can address it then and not just keep pushing it off. Anyway, Carolyn yeah. Kulis. Welcome. We are adjourned.